In this video, I'm going to be answering a help request from Reddit for scraping this website here. It's quite an old website, as you can see. We're going to be using requests and beautiful soup. And there's one little quirk, which I'll show you just now. You have to click on this link and then this one, and it seemingly loads up all of the information here. Now, there was no page refresh, so you'd expect this to be JavaScript. But actually, if you were to view page source, which is what I would always do to start with, and then say search for something like the F numbers that we saw down here, you'll notice that they don't come up in this page. And that's because let's right click in here and we can see view frame source. This is actually an iframe. So what we want to do is click on view frame source and we'll find actually all the, the F information, the F numbers to start with is what we're looking for. Now what you can do if you want to see just the iframe is you can go to inspect and you'll find it up here. You can see it says iframe and then we can just open in new tab and that's going to give us all of this here. But these are no longer working these links. But what we're going to do is because we can see that there is this F number reference for each one when we actually load the page here and then see that this is also an iframe we can then view the iframe page let's go and do that again here it is uh, iframe open in new tab we're actually going to get two new urls with this has got the data so we can actually input the f numbers that we're going to take from here into this specific url to get this information out now although this is not that complicated if you're not in if you're not aware of iframes and how they work and how they actually put that specific page within a page then you could fall over at this step so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the url for this page because i want the f numbers from it i'm going to go to our code i have a blank pycharm project open here uh, you can use any code editor of course all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up my terminal and I'm going to type pip3 install because I'm going to need requests and beautiful soup4. You'll need to make sure that these are both installed into your um, virtual environment or on your machine if you're not going to be using a virtual environment. You want to be able to get to the point that I'm at now where we can have a new Python file that I'm just going to call main.py and we're going to import requests at the top. And then from BS4, we're going to import beautiful soup as well. You want to get to the point where this does not give you any errors at any point. Let's just collapse that and come back to our pages. So I know that I'm going to want to grab all the F data from the these F numbers from this page here. So we copy this one and we're going to say our first URL is going to be equal to this. Let's just paste that in there and save it. Let's also open the page source of this. Hit line wrap so it comes around it and we can see that there um, is this class here and if I just copy it and hit paste you'll see that it's everywhere so this is the actual uh, span tag class that we want to grab so I'm gonna write a Python function to actually get this information and spit it back out for me what I want to get is a Python list of all of these F numbers so then we can iterate through them and go to each URL for them on that page and grab that data so let's start with a new function and we'll say uh, get f numbers we can let's just do f numbers like that and we're going to then say our url can go in here because this is the url for the f numbers that we want then we want to say that our response is equal to requests.get the url we've given it here now i don't expect this website to actually need any extra headers than this but we'll find out uh, when we get there if we do need them then we want to create our soup object and we'll say that is equal to uh, beautiful soup and we're going to give it the response dot text and we'll just use the html parser like this which is built into python so this has given us the soup object what i like to do now is i like to try just to make sure something's there so let's just print out soup dot and I'm going to use uh, select one because I like to use CSS selectors rather than the traditional soup selectors. It's just what I prefer. You don't have to use them. You can use the soup ones if that's what you're used to. And then we'll just put in title because we want the title. Then I'm going to run this function down here, save and we'll run this file. 
and we get back the title back here. So now I know that the page is actually working and I've got the right title back. Quite often, if you've hit a stumbling block, you get a different title. If you're not sure, you can also print out the response um, dot status code like this response dot status code and that will give us 200 in this case there we go so we know we are working I'm not going to leave this in I don't think we need it so we need to now actually find the span tags with this specific class so I'm going to remove select one because we want to actually um, let's actually say our f numbers are equal to and we want select because we want to have all of them and it's a span dot whatever that's supposed to mean and now if we were to print out our f numbers we should get some kind of uh, element list back here we do great so let's go through and iterate through this because we now have a list of elements so let's just do for f num in f numbers and let's print out f num dot text which we should be allowed to do when we run this now we should just get the text for each of these now you'll notice that there's obviously some extra data in here we are getting this as well now we could have a look in the HTML and see if we could um, find a better way to really focus in on this specific span tag that we want um, by saying is it the first span tag in the TD class so you could go back up but all I'm going to do in this case, because I'm just applying these to a list, is I'm just going to say fnums list is equal to here, our blank list. I'm just going to say if our fnum.text and index the first character is equal to f, we'll print it out, print uh, fnum.text. And this should now just filter out those extra ones that we didn't want. There we go. So now we can just, instead of printing these out, I'm just going to do our fnums list dot append and we'll stick all of these in here and then we'll return it out of our function, our fnums list. There we go. So all we've done with this function is we've basically gone to this URL, passed out the specific numbers that we wanted, that reference for each of those places or whatever they are, and we've basically just filtered them down here and returned them in a list. You could turn this into list comprehension too if you wanted to make it a bit neater and tidier, but I'm just going to leave it like that. What I am gonna do though is I'm gonna put our if name is equal to main down here, which basically means this will only be run if this uh, script is run directly. It's quite a common Python practice and it's a good habit to get, in, get used to, get into. What, we, what do we want to do now? Well, we want to actually do something with these F numbers. So let's go back to the second uh, page here and we've got a URL. Now, the first thing I like to do with URLs that have got things at the end like this is to remove the thing at the end and see if it still works. And the information is all there for some reason. The styling is uh, signalized with this extra thing here. So, but I don't need the styling, so this still works. So let's copy this URL and let's create a detailed uh, page uh, scraping bit. So let's do a new function. So we'll say def detail page and we'll pass in our F number, not our N number, our F number. And again, we can do response uh, is equal to requests dot get. And our new URL is going to be what I just copied. And instead of putting the hard coding it in here, I'm going to turn this whole thing into an F string, which will allow me to put whatever into here I want to. So we'll say the F number. So every time it goes through this, we give it the new uh, F number. It's going to requests rather stick it at the end of this URL, which as I showed you over here will work just fine. So now we need to pass this page. So I'll say that our soup is equal to beautiful soup and we'll pass in the uh, response dot text and again we'll just use the HTML dot parser here so let's try it out again let's do print uh, soup dot select one let's just find there is no title on this so let's do inspect and we'll just say 
we are let's uh, any table will be fine let's try table table okay I'll save that now I'm going to save what comes out of our first function which is our list into a variable in our actual name is main down here so we'll say our uh, numbers is equal to I know I've done f num and num too many times uh, that's probably something that we would change if we were going to use this more but what we'll do is we'll just say detail page for numbers and because this is a list we'll just ask for the first one because this will be used within a loop so let's run it okay there's all the table information here so let's say we wanted to grab just a couple of pieces of information, uh, the email and perhaps uh, the name of the, the thing or something like that. Let's go ahead and pass this out here. So let's do, instead of printing soup.select, we'll just find where the email is. I think it's under over here. And we can see we have this TD class. Let's grab that, come back over here, TD dot that. And then we should be able to save this into email and put dot text because we are using soup dot select one, which doesn't return a list. And we need to go for the A tag here. Now you'll notice when I look at this um, inspect element here, there are two A tags. What you could do is you could either say you want the first one or you could be really even more specific, which is what I like. And you can do A and put the open the brackets like this, href, and do the up, and it will match everything that has mail to mail to in it like this. So this is going to guarantee it here. So let's print out the email. Let's save, run this, and we should get the email address out here. Now I know I'm dealing with people's email addresses, but they are freely widely available on this website. We're not doing anything nefarious to get them. So as far as I'm concerned, you put them out there open on the email with no open on the web with no obfuscation or anything. I think it's fair. Okay, so we don't want to print the email. We want to do something else. Let's grab one, one, more, one more piece of information. Let's do this one here. Uh, this should be nice and easy straight under this TD class here. And we'll just call this name. Uh, we'll do soup, soup dot select one uh, td dot that, and it should just be the dot text in this case as well. So we can now print out a tuple of our email and the name first, name and email like this. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, perfect. That's the information that we want to get out. So we can now return out this tuple, return, there we go, and we don't need the brackets, there we are, so we're returning a tuple. Now if I just print out what comes out of this function, instead of using the print with inside the function, because we're now returning this information, we should get the same thing back, which we do. So let's go ahead and tidy this up a bit more. I want to have a main function that I'm going to use to run everything. So I'm going to put these inside here and remove them from here. And I'm going to say that this is only going to run our main function. So it's nice and neatly out of the way. Okay, so what do we want to do then? We want to loop through every one, every number that we have in this list that we've grabbed, do this to it and save the data out. So let's have a results list. So we're going to end up with a list of tuples. We can keep this, but we need to actually we'll rewrite it. What we're going to do is we'll do for num in numbers. And we can then do our results dot uh, append because we want to append the tuple that's going to come out of this. So we get a list of tuples and we can append out what comes from the detail page of the number that we give it. Let's also go ahead and print the number so we have some visual indication of where we're at. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to index my list. I'm just going to say give me up to the first uh, 10 just so when we are working out what's going on we aren't um, just doing the whole thing every single time. And then let's print out the total 
uh, results results okay now we'll run this and we'll see we should get the numbers come by which we do first 10 or so and there's our list of tuples with the name and the email afterwards so this is uh, two main two basic functions one to pull out all the F numbers and then one to go to the detail page remembering that we had to use the looking for the iframe as opposed to the actual main page uh, because if you didn't if you looked at the source for the main page the information from the iframe isn't going to be there but you can of course view the frame source and reload the frame and actually find it in here if you go to the actual iframe part it will have a source link that you can follow that will take you to that page so the final thing would be to save this data out into some kind of format um, we have a couple of options we could do either uh, json or csv so let's go for the csv route and we'll import csv at the top we're going to write ourselves a new function to save to csv and this is going to take the output that we give it which is our list of tuples so we can say that with open and we'll say we'll just call it results.csv uh, i think we need to put in right in here as f and then we can say that our csv writer is equal to csv dot writer for our file then we want to do for data in output that's actually a bad name for um i'll we'll just call it item in output which is our list we want to do use our csv writer object that we created dot write row i think item that should do it so now we'll do save to csv we'll put this in our main function instead of printing the results We'll save them to CSV instead. We'll leave this print statement in here though so we can actually see where we're at. And let's run uh, again with the shortened list just in case I've made a mistake with my CSV, which I have done because I've done right bytes, not right. There we go. That's that solved. Run this again and we'll see. We should get our file output done. So open up my project file and the results.csv and there we have exactly the information that we were after. So hopefully you guys have got some good value out of this and have understood what I've done and when I have made some decisions which maybe you might not want to make like this one here or maybe you are happy with that solution um, and also I hope you found it interesting with the iframe which might catch some people out. Uh, I like to also create a detailed page scraping function that returns the information in tuple format because it makes it nice and easy when you have a list of tuples to write the information to a CSV file. I use the main function and if name is equal to main, you of course don't have to do that. You could just write this out here without either of these, but this is good Python practice. So thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, I think you're going to like either of these videos here, which is more of the same sort of thing.